Okay, before we get to the review, there's going to be a few changes here on the Vagabond. First and foremost, I have a Patreon account campaign that's in the works right now. It's not ready yet, so don't go there yet until I tell you to. Be a good boy. Be a good boy. Second of all, for some stupid reason, Activision decided to release this game the same week that another Platinum game was coming out, and that one's published by Nintendo. And the reason that's going to fail, because one publisher is Nintendo, the other publisher is not. So, fuck you, Activision. But now that we got all of that out of the way, let's get to the review. So, Legend of Korra, this is a franchise I wasn't expecting to be turned into a game. However, I am wrong. A while ago, I reviewed a whole bunch of Korra games on the Nickelodeon website, and each game kind of gave me very diverse reactions. Between infuriating me so much that I had to grab my happy pills, or captivating me so much that it felt like I took my happy pills. But the whole entire idea behind that was I was not expecting a Korra game to be made. And boy was I wrong. Not only was a Legend of Korra game in the works, but they got the best developers on the job. Platinum Games. Uh... And they have top-notch publishers to make sure this game gets distributed properly. <laughs> Why? If you've never heard of Legend of Korra, look it up, because I'm not going to hold your hand here. And that's the proper attitude to have, because this game assumes that you're a fan of the series. The plot takes place directly after Book 2 after Harmonic Convergence, and after a heated pro-bending battle, Korra is viciously attacked by remnants of the Equalists, the villain organization from Book 1. When she awakens, she's discovered that all of her bending has been blocked off, and she has to go on a journey to stop this evil spirit while at the same time trying to find a way to get her bending back. The adventure begins. Beyond that, the story doesn't really get that much interesting. I mean, this is the bare bones requirement of not trying to fuck with the continuity of existing lore. There's a new enemy that no one's ever heard of, familiar faces don't show up to help, and you don't really get that much of a feel for the stakes. I mean, there's some grandier things happening in here, but you don't really get the weight of anything. You get the feeling that you have to stop the bad guy, but you don't really grasp how powerful he truly is until the final part. But even then, you don't really see much of grandeur to his abilities. However, they balance that out with every single major battle be epic as shit. Everything is just stylized and to the core, it looks pretty awesome. You know, everything that you do in this game actually feels good, and it looks amazing to play out. This game's presentation is actually pretty good, however, not on par with the main menu of Dark and Delight. The animation is separated into two different styles, the in-game animations, which is 90% just gameplay, and the cutscenes, which are 100% made by the same people who draw Korra. That is what you call dedication. This game is going out of its way to make it feel like it's Legend of Korra. And you know what? It succeeds. Because it does feel like I'm actually watching the show, even though I'm playing a video game. Go in peace. The gameplay in this game, I'm not gonna say it's flawed, but it definitely need, kinda needs some work. Don't get me wrong, it's good gameplay, but I'm pretty sure that this needed a bit more polish. It feels a lot like a Bayonetta game if Bayonetta didn't have very superb gameplay. Like in Bayonetta, combat centered around dodging and counterattacking your opponent. In Korra, it's more or less the same thing, however, it's kind of vague whether or not you should be dodging and counterattacking your opponent. Because some fights require you to dodge and counterattack, however, they don't really give you anything else for other parts of battles. Like, there's these guys you can't block, so what do you do? Do you dodge them? Do you flank them? They're guys that shoot projectiles at you. Do you hit them long range and just get hit by guys that you can't block? There's huge mega tanks that attack you from long range and do huge amounts of damage. Do you stand your ground and fight them or do you have to center around maneuvering them? You know, it's not really clear on what you're supposed to be doing with these enemies. I mean, I'm pretty sure there's a way to get around them, but the game doesn't really 
clarify what you're actually supposed to do. But then again, I guess that's part of the fun, trying to figure out your own solution to these problems. However, it's not really clear what problems need to be solved and how they're supposed to be solved. It doesn't give you notes, okay? Get in there, learn the combat. Here's the game, here's the mechanics, here's some enemies that know how to counter them. Solve for X. It's not holding your hand too much. However, I kind of wish it did kind of hold my hand a little bit because the difficulty in this game is kind of jank. I mean, if you're a fan just looking to see what this game's about, you might want to part down to easy difficulty. Because normal difficulty, if you're not a seasoned gamer, this is going to be frustrating as shit. Enemies, all enemies, no matter what scale or size or whatever, do crazy amounts of damage and can stunlock you pretty easily. So you really should think about what your mechanics are and how you should go about using them. Because that is truly the difference between eating a stunlock combo or turning the tides of the battle in your favor. It really is. I like the different ways they handle the bending in this game. However, that might be just because it reminds me of Dark and the Light. You know how fire bending was long range, water bending was close range, earth bending was heavy attacks, and air bending was platforming assists. In this game, it's more or less the same thing, except water bending is ranged. However, for efficiency, you have to commit to combos. Fire bending is close ranged and has rapid attacks. However, it's only for singular enemies. Earth bending is heavy attacks and has a rave effect. However, it takes a bit of wind up. And air bending is juggle combos. And those are always fun. It's really fun to mess around with the combat and see what types of combos you can pull off. And cobble that together with the sense of epicness this game is trying to present, this game left me with a positive impression. So this game may not be the best platinum game. However, that's not exactly a bad thing because Platinum games are god tier. So really anything bad I have to say about this game is in conjunction with other Platinum games. And the game's not really that long either. The main story mission is about two hours. And you really don't have to break the bank to buy this game because it's 15 bucks digital. So if you have 20 bucks to spare on a game, you cannot go wrong with Legend of Korra, the video game. This game really left me with really confused feelings. On the one hand, really great effort in game design once again by Platinum, and on the other, Activision decided they wanted to make this game. In the meantime, guys, why don't you stay tuned for my Patreon campaign. It's coming up and it's going to be awesome. Or very disappointing. I would like to withdraw that statement. <laughs>